so now, uh, aside from various graphics introducing the person properly, I think we can now focus on uh, getting the ins and outs happening. There's going to be some ins and outs happening uh, that we're going to need some video fade outs, I think, and audio fade outs, maybe not so much. Those have already been done. But some video transitions. We're going to need some dissolves because there are going to be times when he plays and times when he doesn't. All right, so let's play it from the top, even though it has the wrong credits. Here comes the music. And this is about where we want uh, him to be in place. So let's bring this up. And I could even make it, you know, pretty exact as to where, if I want this to synchronize well, one with the other. So let's take out the lead in there. And uh, now let's do a video transition of a dissolve, cross dissolve. We'll put it right here. And let's see how this flies. See? So that's going to fade him in. Now, we could lengthen this fade a little bit, because he hasn't played yet. And that could be a little artsy. So you can just take it and drag it that way. Cool. So by the time he plays, he's in full, uh, full focus. So let's roll this from near Philip's entrance. Now you can see in the pink area here that I should be dissolving in at this point uh, and uh, with a graphic that says that uh, I'll be appearing and then I'll come in, etc. It may not all render very quickly now, but here I come. But the most important thing we want to do now is determine when Philip needs to fade out, because all my fade in and fade outs are done. So there I am, I fade in, that's all good. So I should be set now for a while, because the way that this format is done, I've already said, you know, who plays when, etc. So. Uh, Philip Jones stays on camera for quite a while uh, because we trade the melody and then now we have the bridge where I take up the bridge but he plays backgrounds a little bit well, it looks like he chose not to play backgrounds in that bridge which is fine See, so he's sitting there, as I will be sitting there at some points, and then he comes back in. So at this point, what happens is that the two players trade phrases together. So I'm just going to leave both cameras up. We'll start with trades of uh, about eight bars of bees. So you can't tell by the physical rendering of the video but at this point, Philip Jones is playing on the right, so there was really no need unless I want to get hyper detailed for me to remove him from the picture for a while. So we're going to do trades, and then we're going to do simultaneous playing before it gets to a point where we pull out. See, he's now playing, and I'm now listening to nobody, because at the time I couldn't hear. So there's trades going on, and we have to find our way out of the trades. Uh, before we consider anything else in the video editing. Going forth, we have a little further to go here in that. Now we're going to 
setup. I believe now Philip Jones is solo, so I will fade out. That's already done, and he should continue. Now, I could decide to expand him to the full screen and all that, but I made a decision early on to just leave the two players in their respective turfs so that I didn't have to do more video editing. So, uh, as Philip solos, I'll just drop out of the picture. You will eventually see me fade out, and I'll be out for a little while as it goes to Philip Jones solo. So that work is actually done. Now I need to go find where Philip's solo ends. Uh, we fade him out. Coming down to the last four bars of his solo. So by this time, I will be fading back in. Uh, you can't see it because my green file is nested, which means that all the edits are uh, in that area are melded into one uh, video track. But as the computer catches up with rendering, you'll see that I am now back on the screen. And uh, there it is. And uh, this is about where I will be fading, probably fading Philip out for uh, a little bit. It looks like a pretty good point. Yeah. So let's take that. We'll splice it there. Uh, we'll go back and find the uh, spot where uh, I should have made note, but where he finishes his solo. So I'm betting somewhere around here is where we're going to want to visually fade him out depending upon what he's doing here. He's going to put his horn down. He's going to reach, maybe p turn a page, empty the water key. So let's see where he is at this spot and if this is a good spot for us to pick to fade him out. Maybe around here, let's call that. Which means that I'm going to take this. I'm going to delete this middle section. Now I'm going to go into my video transitions and I'm going to grab dissolve. Cross dissolve is a good way to do it. Uh, a little bit there and we can cross dissolve a little bit on the way out uh, and we can lengthen this as need be uh, I'm not sure how far this will be exactly see what this looks like not bad you know, now do we want that to be any longer like from when I start really playing we could probably do that Let's see if I uh, we wait for the computer to re-render it'll probably show me with my horn uh, coming up as he finishes. Okay, so he finishes right about there. So that cross dissolve is pretty well placed. That's cool. Now if I want to, I can even lengthen the, the track a little bit. Uh, and that will put more of his original frames in there. And I can put the dissolve up further. And so the dissolve will start about the same time, but will take longer to do. Now let's watch the fade at the end of Philip Solo. That's nice. I like it a little more slow and artsy. All right, I'm going to save the file myself. Now it's just me for a while and then he fades back in. And we can see uh, how soon it's needed, uh, if we need to draw that out a little further. But it's interesting as I showed you that even though you cut out, I cut out a certain section of the video, I can essentially restore some of that video by just dragging into that cut territory and it remembers those frames and restores them if need be. So let's see what happens here. Ah, that worked out pretty nicely. Uh, at the same time, let's say I wanted to uh, make that a little longer fade. I could, in fact, do it, uh, lengthen those frames a little bit and lengthen the uh, cross dissolve the other way and let's see what happens as it uh, transitions yeah I like that just fine now that's probably the last fade I need because the rest of the time we do a little trading we do a little layering and then we're done then it's all about the credits uh, let's uh, just check the tail end of this so here's the last two bars, bar and a half. Cool, so now we have to see how we want to fade out Philip's image compared to my fade out. 
They don't have to go dark at the same time. It's not a crucial issue for me. But we both happened to look at the camera, so that was nice. But his ends, ends uh, sooner. So, you know, there's some options here, though. So let's say I want to add a frame hold to make his image last longer while he's looking at the camera. I think maybe about here might be it. And let's say if right there, I say, with a control click, I say, add a frame hold. Now, if I butt the two of those together, no one will be the wiser, first of all. Okay, now, if I take this and expand its length, let's watch the image stay still, I hope, once it renders. See? So he stays there. Now, let's say that we make this look roughly the same length as that one, and we put a dip to black at the end of this one from here to roughly where the other one was. Uh, let's see how those seem to compare. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. But let's say I try to make it more exact. Doing pretty well. Doing very well, I'd say. So let's see what that actually looks like. And we will fade from there. So that works pretty well. And then we get into the final credits. So, so far, so good.